Windows computers, especially gaming ones, are the ones to go for the best performance when practicing in FPV simulators. But what if you have a MacBook or Mac OS PC? Can you use these FPV simulators? How well do they work? I have a MacBook Air with the M2 CPU which has 8GB of RAM and passive cooling. So, it's on the low end of the performance spectrum. And I also have installed 7 FPV simulators I will try at optimal video settings and see how they really work. So, despite that I have a dozen FPV simulators purchased, only these 7 are worth mentioning at the moment if you're looking for one and you have a MacBook. Not every FPV simulator can be installed on a Mac. To make sure I get the best out of this, I closed all my apps and I'm recording the screen directly with my phone so the screen recorder won't take any resources. Now, let's start right into it and I'm gonna pick Trip FPV as the first sim. Just as a note, at the end of this video, I will place all these FPV simulators in order performance wise so you know what to pick. Trip FPV is known as one of the most resource-hungry FPV simulators out there. Their graphics are stunning and after the last December major update, this became not only one of my favorite simulators in terms of physics, drone dynamics and customizability, but also because of the astonishing graphics, of course, I mentioned. But that is on a Windows computer. If you install Trip FPV on a Mac, you will be highly disappointed. Well, in the past, it used to work just fine, now the game freezes quite a lot, becoming unresponsive, the buttons cannot be clicked and I cannot change even one single setting. I tried to practice a bit on my MacBook Air M2, as you see, with the recommended settings where the resolution is set quite high and it shouldn't be. The game is very laggy, has frame drops and the details are simply terrible. Moreover, I couldn't even enable the FPS counter so you can see the real FPS. But that's not all. As you can see from this video, Trip FPV has a huge delay response between the remote controller and the game. It's about nearly half second latency. This makes the simulator unplayable on Mac computers, even on a high performance one. Trip FPV is a definitely no for Mac. Don't bother until they fix all these bugs and performance issues. Now, let's go next. Uncrashed FPV. I love Uncrashed, not only because of its simplicity, but because they have excellent performance even on medium tier computers. And now with Max, I shall say I'm a bitty bit surprised. Uncrashed had several updates lately that increased their performance drastically, especially on Mac computers. The gameplay is very smooth, even if I'm running on native 2.0K or similar resolution, a thing which I cannot say about many games or FPV simulators. Moreover, I also tried to run and crash at maximum details with maximum resolution on this little MacBook and the performance was super smooth most of the time. Of course, that I prefer to keep the details on medium as the laptop gets quite hot and after a while the laptop throttles down to keep with the temperature under control. Even like this, Uncrashed works many times better than Trip FPV and, of course, it all depends on the map you're practicing. While the first map I tried is less resource hunger, the second one and some other ones will require a bit more resources to run smoothly like the first one. But overall, I love Uncrashed on Mac computers, it's very well optimized, so a very big plus. In the meantime, if you find this video helpful, give us a like and a quick subscribe to help us grow and provide you with more FPV content, especially simulators. Now, moving on, Liftoff and Liftoff Microdons. Somehow, I want to combine these two FPV simulators because they are both created by the same company. However, they are different, so performance-wise, they should be kinda similar. Or so I thought. A while back, when I made a dedicated video with the Liftoff simulator on MacBook Air M2, the performance was not so great. I mean, it was okay, but ever since they improved a lot. Now, this is the Liftoff simulator on the same laptop at the beginning of May 2024. The performance is definitely not so great if you're using the recommended video settings. I tried changing and putting the resolution down, 
but still I had artifacts when I tried playing. It seems like you must have the V-Sync on just to make it work, otherwise you have performance issues. Even like that, I had to drop the resolution quite a lot and the video details to make it run smoothly. It can run smoothly, however, it all depends on the map you're practicing. Liftoff has a few large maps I didn't even bother to try them as I know I have performance issues with them on my gaming PC. Anyway, once you tweak the video details and find the optimal settings, the Liftoff simulators it's ok. Not as good as Uncrashed, but still decent. So what about Liftoff Micro Drones? That's also a decent pick, but I will recommend it only if you are into flying mi micro drones. It's as simple as that. Performance wise, the simulator is more than decent and quite far from the standard liftoff. Here in this video, I have set the graphic details to medium, but I left the resolution as native 2.7K or similar on Mac computers, which is quite high. While standard liftoff will have struggled a lot, liftoff micro drones runs just fine. However, I have noticed some of the maps, or at least this one, have some bad artifacts and as well, when you start a new map you will have a few frame drops until resources are loaded. Still, if you drop down the resolution, expect the simulator to run very smoothly. Ok, next one, DRL. Although DRL Simulator or Drone Racing League is not my first pick if you want to learn freestyle and free flight. It is my favorite in terms of racing capabilities as they have a massive online player base. And DRL is not as resource hunger as some other FPV simulators. When I started the game, it was smooth, very smooth, but I have noticed the low resolution, so the simulator sets automatically for my laptop the lowest resolution and the details they could do. Of course, like this, the game was playable without any issues. I tried to scale up the resolution and DRL remained playable, however, I have noticed some frame drops here and there. At a point, I also tried the native letter resolution at an higher graphics, but it was so bad, it dropped under 15 frames per second. It's a big yes for DRL if you're willing to practice with the minimum details and resolution on a Mac computer, but if you're looking to play on a higher resolution, I wouldn't recommend it so much. Temperature wise, DRL got my laptop quite hot, but this was to be expected anyway. Alrighty, the next one is Velocidrone. Velocidrone was the top FPV simulator for many years in terms of physics, drone dynamics, testing PIDs and rates and the amount of content it has. Now it's in a close battle with Trip FPV, of course that's on a Windows computer. However, Velocidrone graphics are on the lower end spectrum so it's made to run well even on poor performance computers. And as for Max, Velocidrone was supposed to work well. I mean really, really well. When I started Velocidrone, it sets automatically the lowest resolution and details. I practiced a bit on some maps and I have noticed some nasty frame drops that weren't supposed to be there. After a while, it became smooth. Of course, that was at the lowest resolution and the temperature was really low, probably the lowest registered in any simulators, so you can practice on your MacBook battery for quite a while without draining it too much. Furthermore, I tested with the maximum resolution and high quality graphics and I was surprised to see it as smooth as with the lowest resolution. What I cannot explain is that rarely I could see any frame drops at the highest resolution, it was as smooth as butter. Nevertheless. That's probably because Velocidrone did not focus on environmental details too much, but on simulator physics and drone dynamics. So, for now I can say it's a big yes for Velocidrone on Mac computers. Of course, it all depends on the maps and environment you choose, but you should not have any issues if you have a MacBook Air with the M2 CPU and even a lower Mac computer. As we see from their website, they have full support for Intel based Mac OS computers. And even at the highest resolution and details, my laptop remained quite cold. Alright, next one and the last one is FPP Skydive. The FPP Skydive from Orqua is one of the top free to play FPP simulators. So, if you already have a Mac computer or laptop and wondering what FPP simulator to purchase, it costs you nothing to install and try FPV Skydive. It doesn't have amazing graphics and neither the physics are that great, 
but it's a decent simulator to start for free. I mean, zero cost, unless you want to buy add-ons. When I started with my practice in FPB skydive on this MacBook, I set the highest resolution. I was surprised to see that it doesn't work that well. I mean, at the native laptop resolution, the frame rate in FPB skydive is quite low. Moreover, there are frame drops that makes this simulator not that usable. From that point, I dropped the resolution in half or about there anyway. The frame rate improved, but I could see it still doesn't compare with some other simulators. At the minimum resolution, FPV Skydive was quite smooth and playable, but still, the frame rate was somewhere under 60 FPS. Of course, as I mentioned before, it costs you nothing to download it and install it on your MacBook, even if there are some performance issues. I can certainly say that if you have a better Mac than mine, you should not have issues even at higher resolution, but worse performance MacBooks may not be ideal to use with this simulator. Ok, so let's get a little bit to some conclusion. Well, I have hundreds of hours of training and practicing in FPP simulators and most of my content around this uh, YouTube channel is around FPP simulators anyway. Here is what I have to say based on my experience. The best FPV simulator performance wise that works well on MacBooks and other Mac computers is, well, drum rolls and crashed FPV. That's without a doubt, because at the highest settings and resolution, Uncrashed work really well. It's extremely optimized and smooth on this Mac, or at least on M-type CPU Macs. In descending order, here is what else I have to say. Velocidron is the second one I recommend. As I mentioned, they optimize the simulator even for lower-end MacBooks, including Intel-based ones. You will suffer a bit at the beginning if you don't have enough RAM with some frame rate drops, but once it loads all the resources, it works extremely well. The next one, and the third I recommend, is Liftoff Micro Drones. It works very well and is smooth, but pick this only if you're into flying micro drones. Liftoff, the standard one, is the fourth one I recommend. It works smoothly on this M2 with 8GB RAM and will work smoother on newer or better MacBooks than mine, but I cannot guarantee the same performance on lower end MacBooks. Moreover, keep in mind that you will have to change a lot of video settings to optimize it and run smoothly. The next one, the fifth, it's DRL. This is in a close battle with Liftoff and sometimes I feel it's more responsive than it. But to make it work smoothly, you will have to drop the resolution and all the details to a bare minimum, despite the simulator having poor graphics. FPV Skydive is the sixth one. I think it should be optimized better. It doesn't require a lot of resources to run, but still, you will have occasional frame rate drops and will work under FPS even at the lowest settings. I recommend it just because it's free. The last one is Trip FPV is the most terrible and I will definitely not recommend it on any Mac computers. Not only that the performance is terrible, but the simulator is so buggy on Macs that it makes it unusable. You cannot even click a few elements here and there or change the settings and resolution because you can't click the elements. It froze several times and proved to be a simulator to never try on Mac. It even overheat my Mac. Anyway. On computer, that's another story. If you have a gaming laptop or gaming computer with a very good dedicated video card somehow, even the simulator proved not to be buggy. I was playing it quite a lot, I was practicing it quite a lot as you can see in these videos and I really cannot complain about it. Well, there you have it. Now, if you want to join the FPV world and get started like everyone with an FPV simulator but you only have a MacBook or Mac computer, now you really should know what to pick. I would definitely recommend one of the two as the first to choose. Uncrashed FPV and Velocidrome. Those are my first two picks. Thank you once more for watching this video. If you found this helpful, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe as it will help our channel grow and produce more FPV and FPV simulator content. I hope to see you around.